so friends a uh, very warm welcome to you all now today we will start the next topic that is uh, semiconductor pn junction and uh, the various devices and their applications so first of all we will going on to study under these objectives what is mean by that semiconductors uh, then uh, doping term then various types of semiconductors then pn junction then pn junction diode diode biasing vi characteristic and diode currents so all these are the objective of our today's session so we'll see one by one semiconductor you are already uh, familiar with this term that is nothing but the material having its conductivity which lies in between conductor and insulator that means it is not a good conductor as well as it is not a good insulator right and uh, from that uh, periodic table of the material the best examples uh, under this is uh, silicon and germanium that is having their conductivity or we can change its conductivity is it so these materials in their pure form uh, is also known as a semiconductors while after adding external impurity with this which is known as a doping it becomes impure we can say or uh, and then uh, they are known as a extrinsic semiconductors so for example if the external impurity which is of trivalent in nature examples are like uh, we can say boron aluminum gallium indium etc is added then the form impure semiconductor is known as a p type of semiconductor and uh, in that p type of semiconductor uh, we can say the positive charge carrier that is holes are the majority and uh, minorities are electrons similarly when external impurity of pentavalent an example is phosphorus arsenic and antimony etc if it is added with the intrinsic semiconductor then the form impure semiconductor is known as a n type of semiconductor so in n type of semiconductor the electrons that is negative charge carriers are the majority and minorities are now holes is it now we will see the pn junction whenever the p type and n type semiconductors are connected with each other or we can say join the junction is formed between them which is known simply known as a pn junction right now remember during the formation of this junction a self recombination between that uh, few some charge carriers which are very closer with each other at the edge of that junction gets recombined with each other right and once they gets recombined a uh, stationary charge carriers or we can say immobile charge carriers gets accumulated around that pn junction like this it is shown over here the charge carriers with circle and remaining are the charge carriers without circle so this circled one are known as stationary or we can say immobile charge carriers is it similarly again one more thing you can observe over here if towards lhs side this material is of p type of semiconductor purposely i shown the uh, number of positive charge carriers but at the same time very few number of negative charge carriers are also shown over here to indicate the majority and minority term so in this p type of semiconductor holes are the majority while electrons are the minority and same over here in n type the majority charge carriers we can observe are electrons and minorities are the holes and that term also i mention over here that is minority charge carriers for n type are the positive or we can say holes okay now once that stationary charge carriers gets accumulate around this pn junction that region don't have the mobile charge carriers and that's why that region is known as a depletion depletion means there is somewhat lack of lack of what lack of mobile charge carriers right so that region is known as a depletion region this one where the accumulated charge carriers are immobile or we can say these are the stationary charge carriers in this region now the accumulated charge carriers it looks somewhat like we can say a charge capacitor right now generally we are showing the uh, charge capacitor with one plate as a positively charged and another one as negatively so the same uh, this junction looks like that is it so this junction offers some potential because of this stationary charge carrier and that potential it is known as a barrier potential barrier means what it is acting just like a wall it, it will not going on to allow 
that remaining charge carriers to get recombined with each other right now so that that uh, region it is acting as a barrier barrier to whom for the recombination of remaining charge carriers right and that wall have its own strength we can say in our electronics language so that strength is either we can say 0.3 volt or 0.7 volt and that depends on which type of material is used for the manufacturing of that pn junction so if it is germanium then that barrier potential is of 0.3 volt and if it is of silicon material then that barrier is of 0.7 remember these two now here i shown the equivalent of the diode whenever the diode gets turned on so it will be going to act like this so this is known as a piecewise linear model of diode or equivalent of diode see small resistance is shown in series with somewhat voltage source is it vd vd is nothing but diode voltage and that is of either 0.7 or 0.3 we can say and that already it depends on how much voltage is applied across that diode and how much current is flowing through that diode is it that term we will see later on why it is shown by small letter that already it indicates it is a dynamic resistance dynamic means what it is a variable variable means what or how how it will going on to vary so it will going on to change or vary by the amplitude of applied voltage and the flow of current to that diode right in detail we will see in the characteristic now the diode biasing biasing means over here how we can connect that diode across the power supply so see both diagrams over here is nothing but forward biasing forward biasing means the anode of that diode that is this this terminal which is uh, uh, connected to p type of semiconductor is known as a anode and towards the n type semiconductor it is cathode so if that p type of material is connected to positive of dc source and uh, n type that is cathode to the negative then it is known as a forward biasing okay positive to p negative to n same thing you you can observe over here even if the direction of the diode is reverse but i also reverse the polarity of dc power supply so both diodes are in forward biasing both are same don't get confused over here and similarly another type of biasing that is reverse biasing just opposite to that of previous if n type is connected negative type is connected to positive potential and positive uh, p type is connected to negative potential same thing you can observe over here also so such type of biasing is known as a reverse biasing right now the important terms or we can say the vi characteristic of pn junction it is uh, very important whenever you are studying uh, semiconductors or a few semiconductor devices right so when that diode is in forward bias condition means the applied voltage is positive to p and negative to n how it will going on to act with the change in voltage is it so see you will observe purposely i shown this curve up to the mentioned term as vfb that is forward breakdown voltage of that diode already i mentioned that values it is either 0.3 or 0.7 volt that depends on the material used that is either germanium or silicon respectively is it so whenever the applied voltage across that diode is less than that of that forward breakdown voltage that diode will not going on to conduct due to the barrier potential that wall Uh, which is from across the pn junction that will not going on to allow the flow of current because that wall have its own strength whenever we will going on to overcome it then and then there will be a flow of charge carriers is it and how to overcome it that means the applied external voltage it should be greater than that of the barrier potential and that is nothing but this vfb clear yeah? so whenever the applied voltage will be equal to or greater than vfb then and then there will be non zero current through the diode in forward bias condition is it so first see uh, whenever that applied voltage is equals to vfb a very small amount of current will start to flow is it and that's why i mention it as id min minimum diode current and that will going on to occur at fb vfb is it whenever we will going on to increase that voltage with a constant step size you will observe there is increase in current with exponential in nature that current is not again linear like this it is not a straight line right that's why what we can say the device is not a linear device it is non linear device and 
few uh, terms we will going on to observe over here <coughs> so uh, suppose i try to find out the resistance offered by the device between the applied voltage 0 to vfd right if the applied voltage is less than vfd what i said the amount of current flowing through the diode is 0 milli ampere is it because we, we do not overcome that barrier potential we have to find out the resistance offered by the diode which we are calling it as a dynamic resistance which is equals to delta vd by delta id change in voltage with respect to change in current through that device is it through that diode so if the applied voltage is between 0 to less than vfd that delta id will be 0 so no flow of current is it and in that case how much will be the value of that small already then as delta id is 0 we can see it will be of infinite clear so the diode will be going to act as open if the applied voltage is forward wise but less than its forward breakdown voltage it will not be going on to conduct or in another way we can say the diode will be going to offer the infinite resistance that pn junction not only diode any pn junction will be going to offer the infinite resistance if the applied uh, voltage when it is forward bias is less than its breakover voltage now the second case i taken at vfd uh, to v1 means the change in voltage is between forward breakover voltage to v1 v1 is slightly greater than that of vfd i mentioned that delta vd it is only of 0.1 volt means for example we taken uh, if you consider a silicon diode if its vfd is 0.7 volt and if I take that V1 as a 0.8 now, there will be surely increase in current greater than that of ID mean. ID mean is at VFD. That means there will be a non-zero delta ID. Is it? It will be very small initially. Delta ID it will be very small. Correct. And that's why. But we can say as it is at uh, denominator side, we can say that small RD it will be of very high because delta id is very small that uh, small r d is inversely proportional to delta id right so as delta id is very small we can say that small r d is very high okay now the next pair that is between v1 to v2 again i will be going to change that applied voltage forward by applied voltage across that diode from 0.8 to 0.9 only that means the change in voltage the step size i will be going on to maintain as a constant that is of 0.1 over here uh, you can observe is it now in that case you will observe the change in id that is from this point to over here it will be somewhat more as compared to previous case is it or we can say the change in id will be from i1 to i2 clear in first case it was from id mean to i1 and that change is very small now in second case the change is somewhat more you can observe over here the change in id it is somewhat more as compared to change in id over here is it and that's why i mentioned here the delta id as a high okay as compared to previous case and that's why what we can say that as that small id is inversely proportional if delta id is high then small rd will be small is it the dynamic resistance offered by the diode between these two points it will be somewhat small as compared to previous previously it was very high and previous to that of it was infinite is it now take the another pair that is v2 to vd max <coughs> vd max again that step size is 0.1 volt is it v2 to vd max now you can observe the change in current between v2 and vd max at v2 that current was i2 and at vd max we can say that current will be id max so this is the change in id and you can easily observe that change in id it is very high as compared to previous cases and as it will be very high what we can say the offer dynamic resistance between that two points it will be very very small is it so what is the conclusion from this characteristic or what we can say if there is change in voltage 
with a constant step size across that device there is no change in current with a constant step size that means the change in current is not linear the change in current is exponential it will be going to increase exponentially is it even if the change in voltage across that diode is constant or with the constant step size is it so what uh, i have to mention over here thus the resistance offered by the diode is variable hence it is known as a dynamic resistance denoted by small rd is it in previous lecture one of my previous lecture uh, while studying the resistors and the led uh, i mentioned the dynamic resistance of pn junction devices it is very very small is it 1 to 2 ohm i mentioned over there is it this is the reason behind that correct so that resistance is known as a dynamic resistance as it is dependent on the applied voltage across that device okay so also increasing current is exponential for linear increase in applied voltage so these are our two important points after this discussion right so you have to remember this one now the pn junction diode current already uh, i said that current was exponential but mathematically how it is to be denoted is it so see you will observe uh, the standard equation that id equals to io in bracket e raised to vd by eta vt minus 1 so this is the derived equation so you have to remember this one by using this mathematical expression you can find out the value of current through the diode once you are uh, uh, that means uh, if you know the value of applied voltage to that diode is it in this expression uh, we will see what is that id id is nothing but the diode current i o it is the leakage current which flows due to the minority charge carriers that means even if the applied voltage is somewhat less than that of vb ideally what we are saying the flow of current to the diode is zero but practically if we observe it is it is non zero it is very very small closer to zero is it and that's why and that current is due to minor recharge carriers and it is known as a leakage current that is io then vd that is the applied diode voltage then vt it is over equivalent of temperature which can be determined by using vt by e and at room temperature the value of that vt volt equivalent of temperature it is of 25 millivolt remember this one as there will be increase in temperature remember that if t gets increase what we can say the value of that vt also will get increase is it and when that value of vt gets increase the value of leakage current also gets increase right then what is that another term it is there okay that eta that eta is nothing but uh, the mobility factor of that charge carriers which is equals to 1 if the value of that eta is 1 if the diode is manufactured from the silicon material and you have to take that eta equals to 2 if it is of germanium right now the pn junction diode vi characteristic in reverse bias condition if uh, what is that reverse bias that already i explained if the p type of uh, or anode terminal is connected to negative potential of dc source and cathode terminal to positive then it is known as a reverse bias so by this characteristic you can observe again if we increase that reverse voltage from zero to onward more and more negative then what happens a small amount of current flows through the device again it is known as a leakage current indicated by io okay the value of that io it is very very small right and one more term i mentioned here that is vbr vbr is nothing but reverse breakdown voltage of that diode the vbr of different diodes are different so i mentioned here uh, one example that is for 1n4007 that vbr it is of 1000 volt so in general the reverse breakdown voltage of the conventional diodes it is very high so no need to worry about it right that means uh, okay we'll see uh, that term later on so see again one more thing 
I mentioned here that new voltage. It just looks like our knee, and that's why it is known as the knee point or new voltage. So at new voltage, what happens? The reverse breakdown of that PN junction occurs, and infinite amount of current starts to flow. Infinite means what? It 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 will be not exactly infinite, but it will be equals to the maximum current providing capacity of that source, which is connected across the diode in reverse bias condition. Is it? And because of that very high current. The device gets damaged permanently. The pin junction diode gets damaged permanently. We can't reuse it later on. So, uh, from this discussion, what care you have to take whenever you will be going to use any diode in any application? Just read its VBR. This VBR uh, again, one more term is there, and that is nothing but PIV, peak inverse voltage handling capacity. You might have learned it whenever you study the uh, application of diode as a rectifier. Peak inverse voltage handling capacity of that diode is it? So whenever you are applying somewhat reverse voltage across that diode, the care you have to take the reverse voltage it should not be equals to its PIV or VBR. Otherwise, there is a chance of damage of that device. Device will get surely damaged, is it? But as already I told that value is generally very high, so no need to worry that much about this VBR. So here we can take one example if we consider a 230 volt RMS if it is applied across the diode directly without any step down by considering the same diode that is 1N4007. So here this diode still it will not going on to damage. Why? Because even if it is 230 volt RMS that means very high AC voltage generally we are saying its peak value is 325. VRMS equals to Vm by root 2. By that formula, you can determine the value of Vm of our 230 volt RMS 50 hertz signal. So, that Vm that will be equals to root 2 into that 230. So, that value will be around 325 volts. Means how much uh, peak negative voltage we are applying to this diode. If 230 volt RMS is directly connected across the diode for rectification purpose, we can say how much reverse voltage maximum we are applying that is peak voltage and that is of minus 325 still that minus 325 it is very very small as compared to this rating given for this diode that is 1000 volts so it will not going on to damage is it so this is just uh, for your uh, basic knowledge that's why i taken that example so here uh, I will be going to summarize, you might have understood about what is semiconductors, what is mean by that doping, then types of semiconductors, then what is PN junction, what is PN junction diode, then uh, how we can bias the diode or how it will go on to behave with the uh, different types of biasing that is forward biasing and reverse biasing that you might have studied um, by using this VI characteristic and the diode currents. So, I think you might have learned it properly. So thank you very much.